So thank you, Emily. Now we are getting into the public relations, sales promotion, and trade allowance portion of the chapter. A lot of people don't understand truly what public relations are. And public relations sometimes can be a subset of an advertising department. It can be a um, outside source or outside consulting firm that does public relations. But public relations is getting a company or a person, but mostly a company's name, in the press or out in the public image and having it out in the public image as a positive image. For instance, when somebody gives back to the community, when, when St. John Fisher gives back to the community, we use public relations in order to tell people what we've done. Uh, if you are an opening of a restaurant, oftentimes they have somebody cover that restaurant in the newspaper. That's an example of public relations. Um, when someone does something well, like they partner with a nonprofit, like uh, uh, Buckets for the Cure, which is Kentucky Fried Chicken and Breast Cancer Awareness, that's they get that out in the paper, they get it out in the news, and that's an example of public relations. What the key thing for public relations is hits. Companies want positive hits either in the newspaper, being on news coverage, or something like that. Public relations is likened to publicity, capturing media attention through press releases and other things like that in order to show the company in a very positive light. Major public relations tools are when that's used as new product publicity. Product placements, when one product's name or service is into another. Um, consumer education to uh, to educate consumers on how good the company is, what the company's done, health benefits. Right now, a lot of public relations is going on because of all of the hospitals and the healthcare workers and everybody who's trying to fight this pandemic. Sponsorships and the best sponsorships, obviously, are those sponsorships with regards to nonprofits and things like breast cancer awareness and things like that. Experiential marketing involves engaging consumers and enabling consumers to try products or do things. A lot of good public relations with that. I know an example of that experiential marketing is um, our little town has a fair every um, fall. It's called the um, Livonia fall days or something like that and the fire department has a little van where young kids can go and they talk to them about fire prevention and they have little things that they can do in there in that little van or or, or, or truck kind of like thing or bus so to show uh, young children how to prevent fires and what to do if a fire happens those are experiential marketing public relations types of things so the duties of public relations departments, and again, the departments can be within a company. The departments can be a consulting firm. It can be part of an advertising firm. Uh, is really press relations and public, like I said, public relations, getting the company out into the public so they are seen in a positive light. Corporate communications, when something happens, oftentimes apology strategies. We're going to get into that in just a minute. If something unfortunate happens, the corporate communication takes over, apology strategies, look at something like BP when they spilled oil, all that oil in the Gulf. Heavy, heavy press and public relations to try to show BP in the best light they possibly could given that natural disaster. Lobbying for different things, lobbying for uh, different um, laws to be changed employee and investor relationship, and also crisis management. Crisis management is just that, it's coordinated efforts to handle the effects of an unavoidable or a particular accent. The best example I can give you is, you know, the uh, BP type of incident where they spilled a whole bunch of oil in the Gulf. Well, BP did a great job of helping clean it up, and they also, 
put birds in other habitats, they were birds that were losing their habitats, they took them and, and, and relocated them into a more favorable habitats. So they did a lot of good and they used a lot of press relationships and public relations in order to show that, hey, it was an unfortunate accident. But here's all the benefits. Look at all the jobs that we've created. Look at all the things that we've done. I'm not trying to defend the company. I'm just saying that they use public relations very, very, very effectively in that particular case. So now I get into sales promotion. There's two different types of sales promotions. One sales promotion is uh, for consumers. And those are called sales promotions. And the other one is for business to business. And those are called trade promotions. Sales promotion is any kind of marketing communication or activity that is not personal selling, public relations, or advertising. Most people think of sales promotion as buy one, get one free. Another sales promotion is free shipping. Another sales promotion is 20% off. You always see Kohl's having them, etc. Trade promotions is when manufacturers give their channel partners some type of allowance, some type of gift, some type of money to either help them advertise, to lower the cost of goods, or what have you, in order to sell the product through the channel or through the distribution channel. So trade allowances are price reductions. This, now I'm going to talk about, first I'm going to talk about B2B, not consumer because consumers coming next, but I want to talk about B2B. So trade promotions or uh, consist of trade allowances, which is price reductions offered by manufacturers. For instance, a good example is a Bob Johnson's Chevrolet, for example. Chevrolet might say, after you sell X amount of cars, we're going to reduce all of the prices of those cars to you X percent. So that would be trade allowances. Push money is offered to channel intermediaries to encourage them to sell through. That's just simply giving people money, not necessarily on the product or on the price of the product, but just giving them money to either help them sell through, help them advertise or what have you. Training is also part of trade allowances. Free merchandise uses payment for trade allowances. Um, if you sell, X amount of boxes, of, if Wegman sells X amount of boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese, they'll get another pallet shipped to them at no charge. So Wegmans can take more money. That's an example of free merchandise. Store demonstrations is also trade promotions where um, you see a lot of it at um, wines, wine stores at Century Liquor, where a wine representative, usually from Constellation brands will come in and they will uh, set up a wine display or set up a demonstration or a tasting for wine. And then finally, business meetings sponsored by the particular manufacturer. For instance, I'm sure that Chevrolet has business meetings and conventions and trade shows in order to help all of their distributors and all of their car dealerships to sell the products through. Those are all examples of trade promotions. Consumer sales promotions, well, we know all about those. Those are rebates, coupons, premiums, uh, loyalty marketing programs. Premium is when you get a free gift. Uh, you, oftentimes that's with perfumes or makeup. You get a free gift, you get a makeup bag if you buy X amount of, of makeup, that's a premium. Um, I know that Blue Light had a premium where they were giving out hockey pucks for every 30 pack. I got about 60 hockey pucks. Um, contests and sweepstakes. The difference between a contest is it requires skills. Sweepstakes, you just enter and it's a random drawing. Sampling, point of purchase promotions. All of these different things are, um, and I just went over each one of those, are part of consumer trade or consumer uh, promotional allowances or consumer promos. Loyalty marketing programs, we know all about that. That's Wegman Shoppers Club and all the other loyalty programs that we're part of. The benefits are really customer relationship management and long-term customer relationships. Contests and sweepstakes, the difference between a concept is it requires some skill. Sweepstakes, you just enter and it's a drawing. 
sampling programs, go to Wegmans on, well, not now, but uh, when the pandemic's over, go to Wegmans on a Saturday morning and you can get lunch because there's so many samplings uh, of different things. It's, it's actually excellent. Wegmans does a great job of sampling. And um, I love actually going to, to Wegmans on Saturday morning in order to get all the different samples. The method of sampling is in store. You could mail samples. I just got, uh, the other day, I just got a sample of laundry detergent mailed to me. Um, door to door delivery with samples. There's all kinds of different things. Then, of course, there's point of purchase displays, any promotional display, usually set up by the manufacturer. You see a lot of Budweiser doing that. You see a lot of Coca Cola doing that, usually around some events. Mostly of the events are, say, um, the Super Bowl or something like that. It offers manufacturers a copt of audience in a retail store, and 60% of the purchase is made or the decision is made at that retail store. That is going to do it for media and communications, IMC. Hopefully some of you will take my class, my promotions management class, where we go heavily and into depth with advertising promotional tools and uh, promotional integrated marketing communications. Until then, I hope you're all staying safe, and I will see you again soon.